Hey guys, welcome to Sage's Garage. This is the next installment in my little series when I visited Ilin for the day. In today's video, we go over the rocker shaft, the rockers, the camshaft, and the crankshaft. Everything in this video is basically at the point where I am now, except for the crankshaft. I have had some big news and updates about that. We have to wait until the end of the video to get all the details. Uh, we're gonna check the camshaft now. I visually checked it and it looks good, but it's very important this, the height of each cam to be equal. On this camshaft, I believe it is uh, even intake and exhaust are the same height. So we can measure that with a uh, micrometer here, but we are never gonna be sure whether we are measuring it perpendicular or maybe one we might be a little bit off. So to make that more precise, we're gonna put it inside the block and we're gonna measure with the dial gauge how high every cam goes, each cam goes. So right. I put already assembly lube on the bearing surfaces here because we don't wanna put it dry. And we're gonna insert it where it belongs. Gently so we don't ruin any of the surfaces because these engines, they don't have um, bearings, camshaft bearings. Okay, got Try it. I've decided that they don't need those. <laughs> got it. So that's the last one, it's tricky. Okay, I was there able to put it on. So now I can put a dial gauge from above here. Got it. You see it spinning in there? Yeah. We're gonna put uh, one of the, the tappets. Got it. Yeah, these need to be replaced. Unfortunately, uh, I had them in the right order because I heard that it was important to get them in the right order, but since then they are. Absolutely not in the right order. <laughs> well, they're all so, bad anyways. They don't need to be replaced. Okay. So, so. <laughs> they don't need. Got it. Yeah. I'm just going to find good. the best one. <laughs> one more in there. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's the best one. one. Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> Thank you. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put a little bit of assembly lube on it. So it slides up and down clean. Okay, so to make that easy to measure, we put this plate, but we also put the two um, tappets underneath, and we have these stubby push rods, something like that. These, these are for TR4, that's why they're longer, but we have shorter over here. They have this washer, so between the plate and the washer, there's a spring which allows or which forces the tappet to go back down when the cam is not pushing it up. So now we can measure exactly how much the lift is on this one. So now it is zero, which means we are down, and now it starts going up. So this is 100 tau so far, and then we go another 100. So it is 140, you can see it better from there, I can. 141, something like that, right? And then it goes back down to zero. Got it. So now we can do the same thing for the other one and compare them with all of them, actually. We measured the lift of the camshaft, and here are the numbers of the lift of all the cams. And it's looking pretty good. I only have about four thou difference, so that is great. We're looking at the rockers right now, and... The rocker shaft. Rocker shaft. We want to see if it is worn. So here I have an example of an old worn rocker shaft and you see what happens under the rockers sometimes we have these nail catchers because of how the rockers go slide up and down and if there's no good lubrication your um, shaft gets worn and then your rocker starts playing and here you need to have a very precise uh, gap between the valve and the rocker but because of this play here now it is not so precise anymore. It starts going up and down. So to figure this out without measuring, without taking it apart, I usually just slide it. By, I push it down and I slide it. And if there's a catcher there, it tells me like right here, you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so totally. You're gonna need Intel's another rocker capping. shaft. Yeah. Okay. This one slides pretty good, but yeah. You're gonna need a new rocker shaft. And now I'm looking at the faces of the rockers too. They're not too bad. 
this one is bad. So this needs to be nice smooth face okay. all over. Got but it. Maybe. I see in the middle there it's like yeah. worn some of, down a little. Yeah, some of them are not too bad, but some of them are bad, so I think you should change them all. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to put the crankshaft back in the block so that we can check the end play on it. So we're just getting a better look at the crankshaft and because there is so much just scoring and issues you can see in there as well and then all of these are scratched. I know for sure I'm going to have to get the machine but there is a chance we're going to look at it that I might not be able to use it because of this big issue so we'll see. So let's put the crankshaft in now. We put the bearings underneath, and now we're going to put the thrust washers. Yep. So they go like this with the bearing surface towards the crankshaft okay. on that side. Like that. And then the other side, again with the bearing surface, which is with the two notches towards the crankshaft. Okay. And when we spin them, they go inside there slots. Got it. Okay, now we're gonna put the other halves. Okay, we're just gonna clean them, we're gonna put the assembly lube, we're gonna put the bolts, we're gonna torque them, and then we're gonna measure the end plate. We've placed the main bearing caps and we're just doing the third one right now. And we're having a small issue. Yes. <laughs> because number one and number two are marked and here you can barely see the number two but it matches this number so that gives you the position of the cap but it also gives you the orientation in which direction you need to put it so we have one and two marked which clearly makes this number three and it's different but we don't know the orientation here because there's no number stamped here or anywhere on the cap mm -hmm. but you can tell because it's a different shape and you can see how the bearing was on this side so and you have the same mark here, so the bearing was on that side of the slot, so that's how it goes. Okay, so we, we need to torque this in order to measure the end play, and I don't know exactly what the torque is, but that, now we don't need to be so precise. When it is final stage, when you're assembling it for a final time, it needs to be super precise. Now I'm just going to torque it to 50 tau, because I know that it is somewhere there. And... Uh, then we're gonna measure the end plate. Both, you know what? I'm gonna go to 40. So the uh, wrench clicks when it, Got it gets to that point. I was watching you in the video yesterday when you were pulling. Just a second. So yeah. when you're pulling, you were using your both hands at the end of the wrench, but that makes it um, very wobbly. Okay. If you put one hand here to and stabilize it, stable, it. Yeah, and then you can pull with the other hand. It's much easier. I'm going to pull it. So I'm pulling it towards? Yeah, until it clicks. Good. There we go. Okay. And now these two. There we go. There we go. Okay. Perfect. So we have the dowel gauge at the end of the crankshaft and now we put it, pushed it in one direction all the way and that's where we're going to zero it. So that's all the way. And now if we push it in the other direction, it's going to tell us the end float or end play. So that's six tau. So that's perfect. And let me go back. Yeah, zero, six. And according to spec, the end play is between six and fourteen tau on this engine, which is pretty wide tolerance that they say that they give you. Normally it's six to eight or five to six or five to seven, something like that. But it's good that we're at the bottom end, so this tells you that you have to order standard size thrust washers. 
because they might be oversized as well if you have to be in play. We are finally gonna get this Woodruff key off of here. We have been trying to for literally ever. So what are you gonna use to do that? Just literally a flat screwdriver, a small one that we can fit in inside this gap. And we're hoping to be able to hammer it out like this, but oh. you want to do it or? <laughs> I don't want to mess with it, anything. You, you yeah. try it. I don't want to, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'll uh, hammer off a finger or something. It's not going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting like tricky pool shots. I'm like, okay, everybody stand yeah. back. It has a, mm, like it's a moon shape underneath. Okay. So if you push it this way, this end is supposed to go up. Got it. It's definitely changing. Now it's flat rather than uneven. Yeah. Slowly. <laughs> just keep scratching it. So I'm gonna say, um, bigger hammer. <laughs> That's what they say. We need a bigger hammer. There we go. There we go. So now we can shove the screwdriver on this side and try to lift it. It won't work, so we're going to keep pushing it. There we go. Oh, wow, almost. <laughs> Stubborn. <laughs> wow. I don't want to grab it with vice grips because apparently <laughs> people don't apparently like that. <laughs> I, I had a pair somewhere, but Sage threw it away as soon as she walked into the garage. <laughs> <laughs> so not a chance we're using those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come on. It's buddy. weird that it's so tight. Yeah. Because yeah. normally they shouldn't be as. Yeah, that's kind of insane. <laughs> that's the point of I feel better there. about us not being able to get it out, though, that it's this tricky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there yeah. we go. Hooray. So now we're going to clean a little bit the end here because any uh, like little, I don't know what should I call them. A gouger. Yeah, any little things that stick out are going to prevent you from putting it back in. Oh. It needs to be nice and clean. Okay. So you see, you can hammer it back in when the time comes. Got it. But that's only after you determine these spacers. How many Finally, of them you need. Finally, they're off. <laughs> You've got, yeah. for the record, got three of them. One, two, three. Awesome. What we're going to do, since we have numbers here and here, but not on the third one, so we don't know the direction, we are going to punch something on it so that we know. I don't have numbers, so we're <laughs> going to punch a letter. Yes. And we chose letter A. Mm -hmm. Oh, very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Boom, there you go. You can barely see it. It needs a little bit more punch. This one, though, I'm going to support somehow on something. I don't want to bend it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, actually, I'm going to punch it right here. Okay. Ta-da. Right now, we are measuring the main journals on the crankshaft to see if they need to be machined. Well, they will need to be machined, but we okay. want to see how, how much. I okay. guess they're going to go to 10 over or 10 under, whatever... Yeah, I think it's 10 under code here, because we know that for the pins, connecting rod pins, they're going to have to machine until the gouges disappear, and then the machine shop is going to tell you how much they machined. Hopefully, it's going to be under six, uh, 60 tau, so you can order 60 over or 60 under bearings. But for the main bearings, you might get a wave with just 10. Okay, so got it. That makes That's sense. That's why we need to measure it. Okay. This is 2.3113. We are just doing a double check to make sure that the first time we measured it was all good. It's just the other direction, just yeah. again to make to make sure that it's not oval. 
got. But it is good. 2.311. This one is 116. Okay, so a little different, but close. It's 610,000. Mm. Uh, sorry, 310,000 difference, which is nothing. This one is a little bit bigger. This is 2.3. One, two, four. Again, I'm gonna measure in different direction. Two point three, one, two, zero. Two point three, one, one, seven. Here are the measurements we ended up getting for the main journals. We did two different areas of them so that we could get an idea. Because of the gouging here, we are gonna have to machine it about 10 thou, and that's good because it is still well within the range of the spec. So, since the filming of this video, I did take my crankshaft to a machine shop and I got some very interesting news. He went ahead and cleaned it off and measured it all, and he says that it is bent 8 thou out of round, meaning it bent all this way a little bit or all this way a little bit, meaning I cannot use it anymore. Also, where the third connecting rod was, it got really hot and so it made it all black a different color, and it also created a big gouge that you guys have seen before, but when he cleaned it, you could really see the severity of the issue and there's actually issues on the other side of that circle that I didn't even notice before. One part looks severely like a crack. Here is how it looks and all the little details of things that don't look good on it where it might be cracked and that big original gouge. For all of these reasons, I think it's safe to say I will not be reusing this crankshaft. However, since then, I did put up a short saying that I was in need of a crankshaft, and I am so happy to say that so many people reached out to me, and I am super duper excited about that, so I should be all good. That is where I'm at right now. However, I do still have some more footage from when I was at the Rusty Beauty's garage, so that will be in next week's video. In that video, we take a look at the cylinder head and the valves. That is the end of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye!